Okay, guys, how excited are you to share this movie with fans of World of Warcraft and non-fans? I'm insanely excited. You know, it's been a long time coming. We shot this. We shot this quite a while ago, and um, I think at the heart of it, it's it's a great story, and the mythology of the game is so layered and so textured and so rich um, that whether it's a video game or a novel or whatever the source material is, a good story is a good story. And Duncan was faithful to that, and uh, I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my, I have a great amount of trepidation about this film. I was very scared of how it would be perceived as an audience because, you know, being one of the players, there is a, an insane demand that this be up to a standard. You know, there, there is a, a irrational fear that it won't be, that it'll just be another bad computer game adaptation into film. Um, and after seeing the movie and seeing how the orcs look and seeing the story that we're doing and how it all ties together, I couldn't be more excited or thrilled to ram this down the throat of people like <laughs> me who are expecting it. Because anybody who's expecting this to be bad is going to be so happy and so relieved that we've done it right. And anybody who's never even played the game and has no expectations is going to be wowed by it. And I, I can't be more excited to finally share this after three, three years, years yeah. you know, with, uh, with the world. We're gonna get to how the orcs look because they look phenomenal. But like you guys actually put little Easter eggs. It's almost like a hunt for people who actually know the game, mm -hmm. right? Can there's, you talk about there's, that? There's two movies here. You know, you'll watch this movie once and you'll see a great story and you'll see great drama and you'll see great characters and, and you'll, you'll see that. And then the second time you watch it, you'll notice all the Easter eggs. And if you're a diehard WoW fan, you'll see them all the way through the movie. And if you've never played the game before, you'll be like, what is that thing in the background? Yeah, what yeah. is that Merlock? <laughs> What's this kobold? Like, there's so many great little nods for people like me. But the uh, Duncan and Legendary have focused on making a great story for people that won't recognize these Easter eggs either. And I was so impressed by a how <coughs> the orcs looked, but also like how they ima how Duncan imagined the sorcery. I mean, your yeah. stuff is incredible. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. it was very. We worked with a brilliant movement coordinator on this film, and uh, Ben Foster and I got to just pick his brain and and go to work developing a physical vocabulary for the way magic manifests itself in this world. And we wanted it to feel earthy and organic and elemental. And, um, and just make it something that's true to the game, but also something that people haven't seen before in films about magic or sorcery. And, and then he got, to, he got to put on some pajamas. Yeah, I wore pajamas. It was a big pajama party. Big over pajama the, party. Uh, we were just snuggling camp. all day long. Is that what orcs do? They just snuggled. <laughs> they just snuggled. <laughs> or, you know, the, the, the one, the, again, Terry Notary is the movement coach mm -hmm. that Ben used, and he's this kind of uh, genius uh, movement guy and he worked with all the orcs myself Toby Clancy Anna Daniel on developing a kind of uniform way of moving as an orc you know this with this enormous weight and size and then we went on and developed you know personal nuances for character from that point on and you know developing this kind of very different physicality to yourself was a type of acting challenge I'd never kind of embraced to that way that point before it's very different walking with a limp if your character's got an injured leg than it is to being an entirely different species. And this challenge and that, that, that part of it was such a wonderfully encapsulating thing because you know you would put on a costume mm. and that would, I'm sure, I imagine It informs you. the way you move, exactly. the way everything, yeah. So, but when you have a movement and that's your entire costume, you would slip into this, this costume of movement and that would get you into character. Mm. And it was, it was a very similar but very different thing. So one last question, I love the relatability. The orcs are all about honor and tradition, but also about survival. And yours is about this person that, you know, people didn't really believe in, or, mm -hmm. or you didn't even believe in yourself. Yeah. And then you just became like this amazing sorcerer. Can you guys talk about those themes a little bit? I think there's a world that's very, Azeroth is a world that's very set in its ways. And we find ourselves following these characters who begin to question convention in the face of very adverse circumstances. They find the only way to move forward is to um, question what's come before them. And that's not something that's really been done. And, um, and it propels these characters forward and it propels the story forward. And I think it's just an, it's, it's an exciting concept. Mm -hmm. it's, some, it's part of coming of age. And for a lot of these characters, that's what the story is about. Yeah, and, and for us, the Orcs, you know, there's a break within our own faction of the traditional proud and honorable orcs and those that are fueled by the fell uh, who are more warlike and you know our our battle is a battle of survival we have to go to azeroth and build a new home just just to live uh, and unfortunately that means you know 
half our people are intent on <clears throat> half our people are intent on conquering the humans and destroying them, and the other half just want to coexist peacefully, and that's where the internal conflict and the external conflict come from. <laughs>